Welcome to a Key Smash Studios tutorial. This video will be a continuation of last week's video, which consisted of developing a health system that would change the color of an image based on the percent of health the player had remaining. This video will use the same health system, but will focus on displaying an animation on a widget, as well as having that animation change speed depending on the percent of health the player has remaining. What you see now is what the end result of this video will be, so as you can see the color still changes with our damage, as well as now having an animation play on our UI. And this animation speeds up as we take more damage. As you're watching, if you find this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. Like I said earlier, I'm starting off with the endpoint of the previous video. The link will be in the description below. I would recommend watching it before doing this one, but I'll go ahead and give you a rundown of what happened in that video just in case. So essentially, as I said, we created a health system, and with that health system, we had a health bar that changed colors, and we also created a trigger box that caused our player to take damage, as well as updated our image's color. One other important thing from that video is that I talked about the grayscale of our image. The same is true for the animation. If you are creating or finding finding an animation, you want to make sure it's in grayscale if you plan on doing the color changing. If you don't have it in grayscale, then when you're doing the color multiplication to set it to a specific color, the color won't be the result you're expecting. But now that that recap from the last video is done, we can go ahead and begin. So the first thing we're going to do is create a folder and we're going to name it health animation images. And this is the folder that we're going to drag all of our images that we've created for our animation into. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to my folder and I'm just going to shift click all of the images that I want to be in this animation and then simply drag them into the folder. Once you have them in your folder, you want to right click on them. We're going to go up to Sprite Actions and we're going to click Apply Paper 2D Texture Settings. And all this does is compress the textures to Unreal's default so that way there's no issues. Next, we'll go ahead and go back and right click them again. This time we're going to go back to Sprite Actions, but click Create Sprite. All of our images imported as textures, but in order to do a flipbook animation, we need them as sprites. So that's why we go ahead and duplicate them as sprites. So then we'll just scroll down to an empty space and right click and we'll go up to Animation and then down to Paper Flipbook. And I'm gonna simply name mine Heartbeat. And then you can go ahead and open that and you're gonna want this window to be somewhat smaller. You're gonna want to control click on all of your sprites. You wanna make sure to click on your sprites and not your textures. And you also want to make sure that you click on them in the order that you want them to input into the animation. And once you've clicked on all of them, you can just go ahead and drag them in right there. And if I zoom out, you can see I have my heartbeat animation. I want to point out two important aspects on this. One is the frame property, and then the other is the frames down at the bottom where our images are. This frame properties at the top is the frame rate that the flipbook plays. So the higher the number, the faster the animation will be, and the lower the number, the slower the animation will be. So if I put it at 200, you can see that the animation is playing really fast, but if I put it down to 12, it goes much slower. And 12 is what I'm gonna end up leaving this on. The other thing I wanna show you are the frames down at the bottom. You can adjust these. So if I wanna make this last frame be slightly longer, I can pull it out and now it has a duration of two frames instead of one. One thing that's really important about this for what we're going to do is noticing that the index doesn't change. So even though I now have 24 frames going here, the index is still 23 for both of them since it's the same image. This won't matter if you're simply dragging this animation into the scene, but this will be important to us as we're gonna be displaying the animation using the index number. So that 23 is very important. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just save this, and we're gonna go back to our game, and we'll go ahead and open up our health bar widget. I'm gonna go ahead and make this back to its normal size. And the first thing we want to do here is go ahead and change this image inside our brush to be our sprite. So 
So I've set it to the first sprite in my sequence as that's where I want it to start on the animation. From here, we can go ahead and go to graph. And we won't need the pre-constructor, but we will need the event construct and the event tick. But before we get into that, we're gonna go ahead and create three new variables. The first one is going to be our flipbook. So we're just gonna call this heartbeat anim. And then you wanna make sure to change this to a flipbook. Our next variable will be our frame counter. And this will just be a int. And then we'll create our final variable and we'll call this delay. And it will also be an int, but this one needs to be public as we're going to end up accessing it from our health actor. Our frame counter is going to keep track of the total game frames that have passed throughout our whole animation loop. And our delay is going to keep track of how many game frames we want per sprite image inside our flipbook. Now we can go ahead and set up our functions. So for event construct, what we're gonna do here is set our frame counter to zero, and then we're going to set our delay to 12. So we'll go ahead and drag out, and we'll set our frame counter to zero, as we want the initial frame to be the beginning. And then we'll go ahead and set our delay, and I'm gonna go ahead and set it to 12. This number is completely personal preference. I felt that 12 game frames per image fit the look I was aiming for for the animation while green. I also want to warn you, if you're using event construct, you need to be careful if you're removing and re-adding your widget to your hierarchy. Event construct is called every time it's added to a hierarchy. And so if you're disabling this and reactivating it, then you'll be setting your frame counter and your delay back to the defaults every time you do that. But if you never remove this widget from the hierarchy, as I don't, then you're totally fine and this will work perfectly. Now we can go ahead and go down to our tick event. The first thing we're gonna do for this is get our bar image. And then we wanna set the brush of this image. You can go ahead and drag that out to this one. And we're gonna come back to the in brush part. This is gonna be where we get our sprite from our flipbook, but I wanna discuss our frame counter and our delay a little more in depth before we get there so you fully understand exactly what those are. And the next thing we're gonna execute will better explain that, so I'm gonna do that part first. So we'll go ahead and do a branch. And then our condition for this is going to be a greater than. And our first one is going to be our frame counter. And the next one we want to be a multiplier of our total frames, which again was that 23 index by our delay. So I'll go ahead and do that and then explain a little more in depth why I'm doing that. So again, this is gonna be your total index of frames, which mine was 23. If we go back to the heartbeat, we can look here. This is our last frame. And as you can see, it says index 23. So that's where that number is coming from. And then for here, I'm gonna drag out and get delay. And again, this is the number that we're going to be changing depending on how much health we have. So that way our animation changes speed and gets faster as we lose more health. So again, to go ahead and better explain this, the frame counter is keeping track of how many game frames have passed. And what I mean by that is every time tick is called, a game frame has passed. So I want our frame counter to be keeping track of how many ticks I've called. The issue comes from the fact that I don't want my animation frame to happen every game frame. The game moves much faster than I want my animation to be playing. And so that's when the delay comes in. I take the exact number of frames that I have for my animation, which is an index of 23, and I multiply that by my delay, which is how many game frames I want to occur before I switch to the next image of the flipbook. So in this case, our beginning delay is 12. This means that 12 game frames 
will occur before we switch to the next image in the flipbook. So tick will be called 12 times before we move to the next image of my heartbeat animation. So essentially what this condition is checking is if we've reached the cap of animations before we need to restart. So essentially what this condition is checking is if we've reached the cap of our game frames before we need to restart the animation. And we know we've reached the cap if our frame counter is greater than the delay multiplied by the index of our flipbook. So what we're gonna do is say, if we've reached this cap, in other words, the condition is true, we're gonna go ahead and set our frame back to zero so that way the animation can restart. And then if it's false, we'll go ahead and plus plus and increment our frame counter. And that's everything that will be happening on the other side of our set brush. So now we can go back to the beginning side of our set brush and go ahead and give that in brush a value. So to go ahead and do that, what we want to do is get our heartbeat anim. And then from this, we're gonna go ahead and get sprite at frame. And I'm actually going to drag all of this out a bit so it doesn't get too crowded. And then from our return value, we wanna make a brush from our sprite. And then we can go ahead and drag this value into our in brush. And then to go ahead and get that frame index, we're going to do a little math just like we did a little math for our condition. This one is going to be a division. And what we're going to want here is our frame counter. Over our delay. So again, our frame counter is keeping track of the game frames, but our frame index is looking for that 0 to 23 index that our heartbeat animation flipbook has. So in order to get a value between 0 and 23, we need to take that frame counter and divide it by our delay. So what this is saying is the total frames that have passed in the game divided by the frames that we're allowing per index to discover what frame index we're currently at to know which image to display. So this is all of the code that we need for our widgets. We can go ahead and save and compile this. And now we need to go back to the game to open up our actor. So what we're gonna wanna do here before we do anything else is go to our set image and add a new input. We're gonna make this an integer and we're gonna call it delay value. And then as you can see underneath our set image, we now have this delay value that we can assign to different things. So we'll go ahead and move our color and go ahead and break this execution line and we're, we're gonna have a new one that's gonna set the delay in our health bar. We want the target to be the cast of our health bar. And then of course we wanna continue changing our color. So we'll go ahead and draw that execution line. And now what you wanna do is make sure you take this parameter of set image and drag this delay value over to the delay variable of our health bar. So that's all we're gonna do inside of our set image function. So you can go ahead and save and compile that. And then we're gonna go ahead and go over to our event graph we wanna make sure to set this delay to 12 as that's what we're defaulting it to. So the final function that we're gonna adjust is the damage function. As you can see, all of our set image functions have the delay value now at zero. So we wanna make sure to adjust that to be the correct value that we want per percentage of our health. So we're gonna go ahead and set this one to 12, this one to nine, this one to six, 
this one to three and we'll leave this one at zero. I also noticed after my video last week that this was zero and I actually want this set to greater than or equal to one as once the player has zero health, I want them to be considered out of it. The way it was previously, it was saying it had to be less than zero in order for the player to be out. So I'm just gonna adjust that to one while we're here. So that is all of the code that we'll be doing, but I need to go back to our health bar. And on this flip book, I need to go ahead and set the flip book to be the heartbeat. So make sure you do that and then compile and save. And then you can go ahead and go back to your scene and we can go ahead and play and test. And as you can see, the health bar is there. And for those who didn't watch the previous video, I just have an invisible trigger box right here. So I'm currently taking damage. And as you can see, the animation is playing faster as I take damage. And then it goes really fast when I'm at red and then it goes black when I'm all out of health. So just to recap, we created sprites from textures. We then created a flip book and we put these sprites into it. Then we used a frame counter to keep track of how many game frames have passed. From there, we created a delay variable that described how many game frames we wanted to pass between the displaying of the different images of the flip book. Again, the delay variable was totally my personal preference, just what I thought looked best based off how I wanted the animations to look depending on the health. Those numbers can be completely adjusted to whatever you find fits your animations best. As always, I hope this video was helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you next time.